Hey guys, welcome back to some more Ocarina of Time. Round warp again in between videos. So in this part of Ocarina, we're done with all our side questing. We're ready to go ahead and move on to the next story part of the game. And because of that, there's this little Easter egg I'm wanting to show off. This is actually pretty easy to miss because this guy is only active right now. As soon as we go to the Temple of Time and do stuff there, he disappears. This is very dark because this guard here was one of the guards trying to protect Zelda. And he's actually dying right now as he's talking to Link. Yeah. It's a shame to miss him, too, because he actually does kind of tell you a little bit of what's going on. Yeah, it, it's a little backstory about what was happening with Ganon and how the attack went down here at the castle in general. But that was his last dying breath. Check him again. He's not moving anymore. He's dead. That's sad. Yeah. This music does not help. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead! He's dead! Yay! It's probably more fitting to talk to that guy at night because of that. The Final Fantasy Victory <laughs> Victory Tomb with lyrics. <laughs> now you're dead, you're dead, cause we killed you, we took you by surprise. <laughs> yeah, something like that. We just saw you roaming the forest and said, let's kill those guys. Good idea! <laughs> All right, play the Temple of so Time. Temple of Song? I mean, Song of Time. <laughs> Just play the Temple of Time, the Temple of Time song. Because it's really the only good time to really use this. I mean, we technically don't need to do this, because for some reason, when they developed this castle, they forgot in the temple to put the wall fully flesh to the wall. There's like a, a inch gap there, and Link can just fit right through it. Oops. Oopsie. I mean, they fixed this for 3DS, but in every N64 port of this game, so up to the Wii VC, and Wii U VC, same version, you can easily just jump straight through the left side of the door with a specific clip. <laughs> so you don't even need to do all this stuff. They do it in speedruns all the time. Dot scope. It was found, like, over a decade ago at this point. It's an old trick. But you, it's used in basically every speedrun in this game. So you don't have to do... Any of the child dungeon sets whatsoever. Yeah. The only downside to doing that is you can never open the door as adult. So if you're ever needing to get past it, because it's solid on both sides, you have to warp out or save and quit out. It's the only way to get to the other side. And you always got to clip past the door again as adult to get back to the pedestal time. Okay. It looked like for a second there, I know Link was actually walking in, but the way the camera was, it looked like he slid in. A little bit. Yeah, just a bit. Okay, here we go. Best cutscene in the game. Time paradox. Uh oh. But it was all a twist. <laughs> you know, this is kind of creepy when you think about it, because in this cutscene, Gand reveals that I was watching you the whole time, and now that you pulled the sword, you gave me power. Thanks. So it makes me imagine, as soon as he pulled the sword, Ganon was just tiptoeing into the room where Link was. And this, like, <laughs> psych, I was here all along. Give me my Triforce, bye. It's like that in Lester, please put uh, put this up in post-production. It's like that one meme where, uh, like, Tom, and Tom is, like, sneaking in going... <laughs> So when they tell the story of this, like, a hundred years from now, they're not going to talk about Link, they're going to talk about Fairy Boy. Yeah, it's going to be a little hard to talk about the story with a straight face. So Fairy Boy, <laughs> did this. Well, you know, it'd be funny if he named him my dude. Yeah, that makes it even more awkward. Oh, hey, look, it's Raru. Raru? Raru? Yeah. Hard to pronounce your name. You sound like a dog bark. What do you think, Molly? Ow, ow. What do you say, Molly? 
She's not interested. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about this guy. I don't care about this guy either because he's just a blabbermouth, just like a, a freaking owl. Yeah. Oh, wait! <laughs> I was going to say, wait a minute. So, for a little bit of lore here, Raru is actually the spirit of Kabora Kabora. He just takes on that owl form in the real world to communicate with Link. But when he's here in Chamber of Sages, he can take on his real form, Raru. Why do I feel like I got a growth spurt? Wait, who dressed me? Where did I get these pants? <laughs> and who pierced my ears? <laughs> I think this is the weirdest one. I get giving him clothes because he's taller, but why did this? Why did Raru feel the need to give him earrings? He got look like, cool though. Why did Raru have the, have the need to give him? Yeah, pants. I guess. Like, hey, I found these pairs of pants. Let's just uh, put them on while he's asleep. You know, I was tired of looking at fairy boy taint. Here, have these pair of pants. I don't want to see it anymore. White pants are the worst to wear, too. Yeah, every single stain comes through. You spill a little bit of coffee on you and everyone thinks you pooped your pants. <laughs> so don't wear white pants. So, interesting fact about this place in particular. Chamber of Sages, this area is very interesting looking as you can see but originally with how this game was developed temple of time was originally supposed to be a dungeon and at the end of the dungeon then you would get yourself your very first medallion of the game the light medallion but later in development they changed this so this cutscene here is how you get the light medallion now and because of that i think later on they realized that they had potential of making this actually a dungeon so Temple Time is a dungeon in Twilight Princess, which in a way is almost like a spiritual successor of this game with how many parallels it takes for Ocarina of Time. It takes a lot of similarities to this game. So it makes a lot of sense for that game to have a Temple of Time dungeon when this originally was supposed to have a Temple of Time dungeon. But it was cut near the end of development, like a couple other things. That's so sad. Yeah, because when you first play this, you feel weird. It's like, wait, why did I just get this random medallion? It's because it was from a canceled dungeon. They have to give you this somehow, so they'll just give it to you in a cutscene. Yeah, I got my first frisbee. Out of all of them, every single one of the medallions has some kind of purpose. The light medallion actually doesn't do anything. The light medallion is literally just here because of story progression. Later on, we're going to get other medallions, and once we get those, other story progression items unlock, like new songs or new areas to explore in general. Light Medallion just kind of exists to say, hey, you made progress. Here, just have this. It looks nice in your inventory. No, it's like he found it. He's like, Link, I found this, or uh, Fairy Boy, I found this go golden coin. I don't know what it does, so take it. I don't know, but some Italian plumber has been really hampering me. You're going to need a lot it. of these to change your title screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, I lost seven years of my life. How freaking... Yeah. <laughs> and I can't use some of my weapons? What do you mean I outgrew things? <laughs> you see, I get outgrowing the slingshot, but how do you outgrow a stick? It's a stick. I sense danger behind me. The Link's like, what do you mean? I'm still a kid at heart. I can still play with these things. Oh, great. Now I got my own personal stalker. I'm going to be a Professor Oak here, but are you a boy or are you a girl? <laughs> yeah, because in the N64 version, I have no idea. They fixed Sheik's model a bit for the 3DS version, so it's a lot easier to tell because of how the body's molded that, yeah, that that's a girl. In this version, it's like, what are you? You're just a straight-up stick. <laughs> for a while, I thought Sheik was a guy. It, it I didn't learn until actually Smash Melee that Sheik was supposed to be... Zelda, because at that time, I played Melee before I beat Ocarina. So, you kind of get spoiled with the whole Sheik Zelda transformation thing because of that. This is the same thing I have issues with a lot of people saying, Oh, Smash Brothers just spoiling all things. I'm like, man, they spoiled Sheik and Zelda thing back in Melee. Give me a break, man. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, they've been doing it for years. They just kind of expect you to play all these games before you play Smash, okay? Yeah, I mean, it's not like you can play, like, 70-plus characters worth of video games. I mean, it's a lot. But you can do it. I'm sure somebody has. 
Probably. Some people on the internet just had too much free time. I wish I had free time. Same here, I just lost seven years worth of it. <laughs> I don't have that much time left. Wouldn't that be horrible? You just go to bed one night and then you find out the next morning it's been seven years since you went to sleep. How crazy would that be? Yeah, it's like, wow, that was a long nap. I mean, that does happen, because if you go in a coma, you just think, oh, I only slept for a couple hours. What happened? Oh, I was out for 20 years. Oh, God. All right, Saria. Yeah, so she kind of gives you a hint of where you're supposed to go first. I mean, she tells you you got to go to Kakariko for an item. But she also says, like, which one of the spirits you got to look out for, which basically implies, yeah, Saria's in trouble. You're going to need to save her. And you play the song and it confirms it. Hey, Saria, I know you're, like, telling me where to go. But you see, I got invited to Mario Kart and then Smash won me back. So I got other things to do right I now. I got other things to do. I'm a little busy. I'll come back when I have another 900 Korok seeds. <laughs>